Good afternoon. Holy Week began yesterday with Palm Sunday, and now we are proceeding through the week that will lead to the events of Christ's arrest and crucifixion and death. And then, of course, it ends in the triumph of his resurrection on Easter Sunday. So for my devotions this week, I'd like to look at three people or three groups of people who played minor roles in these events. They're not the big players like Peter or Judas or Pilate or the high priest. But as we look at them, we can learn about the role that they played and how the events of this faithful, fateful week affected them. So I'd like to begin with a man who was part of the group of people who went out to arrest Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. This was the contingent that had been sent by the high priest from the temple in order to capture him. When they arrived in Gethsemane and were getting ready to take Jesus, Peter pulled out a sword and put up a fight to resist them, and he cut off the ear of one of the servants of the high priest. This incident is mentioned in all four Gospels, but only John tells us the name of the man who lost his ear. His name was Malchus. Well, Jesus rebuked Peter. According to Matthew's Gospel, he said, I could ask my heavenly Father, and he would send 12 legions of angels to protect me. But this is what has to happen. And later, according to John's Gospel, Peter was confronted by one of Malchus's relatives. And Peter responded by denying that he knew Jesus, which was one of those three famous denials that Peter made that night. But I want to focus on one important detail that we find in Luke's Gospel. After Peter cut off Malchus's ear and Jesus rebuked him for it, Jesus reached out to touch Malchus's wound and he healed him. And this is the last recorded miracle of Jesus before his crucifixion. His final action of supernatural power was to heal the man who had come to arrest him and take him away. Now we can only speculate. What effect did this have on Malchus? Well, first of all, did Malchus personally want to have Jesus killed? Or did he come only because he was acting on orders? Well, it doesn't really matter. Malchus came to do harm to Jesus, and Jesus responded by healing him. And isn't that what Jesus does for us all? Even when we rebel against him, even when we are working against his good plans, he still acts to help us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, we read that God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so we can all put ourselves in Malchus's place. While we are acting against him, while we are even seeking to harm God, he heals us, he forgives us, he saves us. I wonder what effect this had on Malchus. Did this miraculous touch change his life? Did the fact that Jesus had demonstrated love in the face of his hatred turn his life around? The Bible doesn't tell us, and we don't know what happened to Malchus, but we can only hope that Jesus' touch changed his life. Now there's one other very important thing to keep in mind. By healing Malchus, Jesus also helped Peter. After all, Peter had just assaulted an official who came from the temple. He had caused him bodily harm. Do you think he would have gotten away with it? <laughs> I very much doubt it. Peter had just given that group of soldiers the excuse to arrest not only Jesus, but to arrest him, Jesus' chief disciple and follower. I'm sure they would have been happy to take them both away, and Peter's fate would have been sealed. But when Jesus healed Malchus's ear, he erased Peter's crime. It was as though Peter had never even pulled his sword out of its sheath in the first place. 
You can't say that Peter assaulted Malchus and then say, well, there's no evidence. There's no marks. There's no nothing. As John relates this story, Jesus had told those who came to arrest him, let these men go. In other words, let Peter and my other disciples go. And John tells us he did this to fulfill the scripture, I have not lost one of those you gave me. Jesus had taken away the consequences of Peter's actions. And isn't that exactly what he has done for us all on the cross? Has he not wiped away all the consequences of our sin, made it as though they never even happened? And by doing so, he has set us all free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, as we think about the events of that final week before your crucifixion, especially on that fateful night when you were arrested. You have given us not just one, but two more reasons to praise you from the way in which you healed Malchus's ear. First, we can place ourselves in Malchus's shoes and recognize that even when we turn against you, you always reach out to heal us. And secondly, we can place ourselves in Peter's position. When our actions have terrible consequences, you have removed them by your wonderful action on the cross, and you truly have set us free. For all this, Lord Jesus, we offer you our thanks and praise. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.